Do you want to improve your martial arts skill level? Of course you do, we all do. But sometimes it might feel like you're standing still. You know that feeling when you go to practice, you do your best, but nothing seems to happen. Sometimes it might feel like you're actually getting worse the more you practice. And the reason for that is simple. You're not practicing according to science. Because if you do, and if you know the principles that I'm about to teach you in this video, you will constantly improve your martial arts skill level no matter what you do. Karate, Kung Fu, MMA, Jiu Jitsu, Yoga, it doesn't matter. Because the human body works a certain way. And today, you're gonna learn exactly that. Keep watching. What's up folks, I'm Jesse from KarateByJesse.com aka the Karate Nerd. Now when it comes to constantly improving your skills, especially in the martial arts, there is one very important word that you first need to understand before I can explain why and how you need to practice. This word is stress. A lot of people automatically assume that stress is a bad thing. But that's a misconception. You see, there are two kinds of stress. Eustress and distress. Eustress is a good kind of stress. It is that stress that forces you to adapt and improve and overcome challenges so that you constantly progress. Distress, on the other hand, is that bad kind of stress that overwhelms you and spirals you into negativity and overtraining. Because here's the thing, a diamond it's just charcoal that handles stress exceptionally well. So the first thing you need to really come to grips with and understand is that you need to expose yourself to stress, which is exactly what training is supposed to do in the right dose. Because the difference between medicine and poison is the dose. Okay, so now that you understand that training is all about managing your stress response, Here's a scientific training formula developed in the mid-1900s by some Russian sports scientists that you need to really understand to know how much, how often, and how hard to actually practice if you want to constantly improve. This line right here represents time. This right here represents your physical state. And now, here's your baseline. So let's take you as an example. You're here on zero, okay? This is minus, this is plus. What happens when you actually start training? Well, your body encounters stress. Which means that slowly but surely, your body goes into a catabolic state, which means that it's essentially breaking down and releasing crash, crash chemicals and hormones to try to deal with this stress. But if you stop training, your body goes into an anabolic state because it wants you to recover and go back to the baseline. Meaning, you go up again. But here's why the human body is so clever. You see, in order to not experience the same kind of stress anymore, you actually supercompensate. And this concept of supercompensation is the key to understanding how to constantly progress. You see, your body brings you back above the baseline because it wants you to get a little bit stronger in case you encounter the same type of stress again. And this is the key to understanding how to develop your body and mind. You see, if you practice again, as you encounter the super compensation phase, look what happens. You go down and then again, you stop practicing, you recover, and you go up again. But now the body wants you to keep adapting and evolving to overcome the continuous challenge of stress. And can you see the, the trend now? If I practice again, or you, you would encounter stress and you would respond to that stress and your body would supercompensate because he wants you to keep surviving and adapting. This is the survival of the fittest, the whole idea behind evolution. So the trend goes upward. 
And this is how you actually constantly improve. By challenging yourself to such a degree that your body needs to super compensate for the stress, which brings you above your starting point, the base level. And then practicing again at this exact moment before your body reverts back to the base level so that you keep super compensating and the trend goes upward and you actually progress. Unfortunately, most people don't know this. So here's what they do instead. They practice, we start over, all right? You practice, your body breaks down a little bit and then you recover, but not enough. Maybe your recovery stops here. You're not back and you're not super compensating. So you practice again because you think more is better when in fact more is just more. So your body breaks down again and then you recover, but it's not enough and you train and you recover and you train. Can you see that the trend is exactly the opposite of what you want? Boom. Overtraining and under recovery is what leads to the opposite of progression. You get worse the more you practice. And the key is you never gave your body enough time to enter this super compensation stage, which is where you should have been practicing instead of thinking that more is better. The third option to help most people usually practice is this. They practice, they break down their body a little bit as they encounter the stress. They rest, but they don't enter the state of super compensation because either they didn't practice hard enough for their body to actually adapt to that stress or they start training too soon. So all that happens is that they kind of reverb around the baseline and no progress, but also no regression is happening. They're kind of standing still because they're not pushing themselves hard enough and they're not recovering well enough. So basically they go to the gym and they keep practicing and they sweat for year after year, but nothing ever happens. Now, once you start understanding this concept, something becomes obviously crystal clear. Greatness begets greatness. You need to constantly push your body hard enough to enter a state of super compensation. But then your next training session needs to occur within that time frame. These windows, these peaks right there, if you want to constantly keep progressing and leveling up. Now the question is, how exactly should you find this type of perfect practice? How can you know that you're not practicing too hard or the opposite, that you're not practicing too little? Well, the key lies in understanding three different zones of practice. That's next. All right, so we talked about stress, we talked about super compensation, overtraining, undertraining, all of that. Now, here's the practical aspect. Here's how you need to practice in order to constantly develop your skills. The first thing you need to understand is that there are three basic zones that your training could be in. The comfort zone, the danger zone, and the challenge zone. You wanna be in the last one. The comfort zone is the zone that I would say the majority of people are striving to be in. They want training to be fun and enjoyable and comfortable, and that's fine. But don't come complaining that you're not improving if you're constantly striving to be in the comfort zone. Because the comfort zone is a beautiful place, but nothing ever grows there. In essence, you know that you're in the comfort zone if you succeed with 80 to 100% of your techniques or your reps or your sets or whatever you do in training. Meaning, let's say I do a technique, all right? A, a punch or a, a hook kick or a takedown or whatever, 10 times. If I manage to do that technique or that drill or exercise successfully eight, nine or 10 times, that means I'm in the comfort zone and I need to push myself a little bit harder. But don't push yourself too much because that might mean you're in the danger zone. The danger zone is when you fail with around half or more of all of the sets or reps or drills or techniques or exercises that you do in class. 
50% or less success rate is really not a good idea because then you're actually learning to be bad rather than learning to be good. You're not progressing, but you're overtraining. And that might actually lead to injury or lack of motivation, focus, sickness, or even worse. So what you wanna do is make training a little bit easier, but not too easy, right? Because you wanna be in the challenge zone. The challenge zone is when you have between 50 and 80% success in whatever you do. So again, let's say I do 10 reps of a technique. If I succeed with between five and eight of those 10, that's a good thing. That means I am actually in the challenge zone and I am stressing my body with the good stress, you stress, just enough to adapt and overcome and develop myself, my skills, to get myself to that next level that I really wanna reach. It's super important that you understand these three zones and that no matter what you're doing, all of your training will always be in the comfort zone, in the danger zone, or in the challenge zone. And the only person who knows truly is you. Meaning it is your responsibility to make sure that you spend the majority of your time in the challenge zone. That being said, it's impossible to always push yourself just perfectly in that sweet spot. Maybe sometimes you go too hard and you end up in the danger zone because you wanted to try something fun. Or sometimes you just want some active recovery so you're in that comfort zone on purpose. But that's the key word, on purpose. Because if you truly wanna keep developing your skills, mentally, physically, technically, then you really need to be in the challenge zone as much as possible. I hope that this quick glimpse into sports science can help you improve your karate kickboxing, taekwondo, kung fu, judo, whatever you practice. Because the human body doesn't care what you call your martial art. In fact, it doesn't matter if you do tennis, basketball, or something else. Because the human organism responds to stress in the exact same way. And the question is, what are you gonna do about that stress? And how much stress do you wanna expose yourself to? By now, you should know the answer, because I just told you. Now let me ask you a question. How are you going to use this knowledge? Will you start improving your recovery? Will you start pushing yourself harder? Will you start practicing more often to hit that super compensation phase? Or will you do something else? Leave a comment and let me know how I actually help you. Because after all, wisdom is great. It's good to know stuff. But the key is to apply it. Because that's when change happens. And that is when you actually will start improving continuously by applying these concepts and not just thinking or talking about them. So let me know in the comment section what you're gonna do about it. Train hard, good luck, and have fun.